Welcome to Virtual Lunch in the Exhibit Marketers Cafe. This is our 18th, can you believe it? 18th week meeting in the cafe for Virtual Lunch. So if you are one of our regulars, welcome back. I know we have several people that have been here quite frequently. If you are a first timer, welcome as well. We have a very fun presentation today. Um, but we, I, I always start out, I go through some, some different links and resources and stuff, and then we bring on our special guests. So our focus today is on the magic power of print. And we're going to talk about why print is even more important, you know, print marketing is even more important right now, whether it's for a pre-show promotion or it's just staying in touch with your customers or whatever. Um, so we're going to get to that in just a few minutes, but in the meantime, go ahead and if you're joining us today and you feel comfortable, there's never any pressure. If you don't want to comment, that's fine too. But if you want to introduce yourself in the comments, tell us who you are and where you're from. That would be great. Rama, Rama is probably one of our most regular regulars. <laughs> I think you've been here almost every week. So welcome back, Rama Beerfus from Lev Promotions in San Diego. So you didn't give us a weather report today, Rama. <laughs> Are you sunny and hot like last week? Hopefully not rainy again. We're rainy here in Kansas City today. So, um, yeah, we've had some interesting weather the last couple of days, <laughs> pouring buckets sometimes. And so anyway, um, OK, so I'm going to and my husband, Alan, is behind the scenes as he is every Tuesday. He's going to be putting up some links for us. So the first one I want to talk about is um a friend of mine shared that, you know, a lot of people are doing fun activities and stuff in the family and, and at home to pass the time or whatever. <laughs> Free time, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> I've been working really hard putting together virtual lunch every week. But anyway, she said that she and her husband have been doing Legos. And so, oh, Rama gave us a weather report now. Sunny and warm highs in the mid 80s. Okay, <laughs> good deal. <laughs> So anyway, so she and her husband have been doing Lego kits. And so the latest one they've done is the Central Perk Cafe from Friends. So for all my fellow Gen Xers, I thought I would share this. I didn't know Lego did this kind of stuff. But anyway, this is where you could go see the Central Perk kit. It's really cute. I mean, they've got the six main characters. They even have Gunther. Um, Phoebe has a guitar. Rachel has, of course, the Rachel haircut. It's just hysterical. So anyway, um, and I'm sure they have lots of other clever little fun kits. I just haven't seen them. <laughs> but, but anyway, I wanted to share that as just something fun. Marco. Hi, welcome. Marco joins us all the way from Italy. He was one of our special guests a few weeks ago. And it's sunny in Italy too. Boy, you all are just making me jealous here. <laughs> Although I will say, based on last weekend where we had heat, ex heat indexes in the triple digits, I think I'll take rainy and cloudy over that, but a little sun would be nice. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to share is um, the Brand Experience Collective is a new group on LinkedIn. So if you haven't checked them out, go uh, check that, look for that. It's called the Brand Experience Collective, but they've put together or they're putting together an event professionals database. And so it's just a quick little form that you fill out so that they can kind of start helping, um, you know, because there's so many, as we know, there's so many people in this industry. And if you were with us last week and you heard Jim Worm's presentation, you know, the unemployment rate in our industry is just skyrocketed. So, um, you know, go fill this out and just get your name entered so that they can kind of have um, kind of a matchmaking database. So anyway, I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, also, I want to share a couple of resources that I have for you. I also want to remind you that after today, we're going to take a two-week break. This is our summer break from the cafe, from virtual lunch. But we will be back on August 11th. But in the meantime, if you're looking for some things to do, um, first of all, I have a class, a course that I put together online called strategic, let's see, essential time management strategies for exhibit marketers. <laughs> oh, it feels like a Monday. Um, but anyway, so I have set that class up right now. So it's on a pay what you like basis or pay what you can with a minimum of only $5. So, oh, 
Alan put in the long version. <laughs> If you want the short version of this link, it's exhibitmarketerscafe.com slash TM, the number four EM. <laughs> so anyway, if you're on Facebook, you can click the link that Alan put up. If you don't have access to that, I'll put it up later in, in YouTube. So because we do have people joining in from both places. Actually, today it looks like we've got uh, the comments anyway are all coming from YouTube. So anyway, but um, the the time management um, strategies. So you can go check that class out. I put it together strictly for exhibit marketers. So there's some very specific information in there. I've got, I actually even um, way back when I did my first book, Build a Better Trade Show Image, I had an exhibit exhibitors timeline. I took that. And if you're familiar with the tool, the online tool Trello, I made a Trello board of the exhibitor's timeline. So that's part of what you get in that class as well. So anyway, so now you got the long link and the short link on that one. Um, also, um, I have, let's switch over here. Oh, I forgot. There's the, <laughs> there's the actual name of the course, Essential Time Management Strategies for Exhibit Marketers. Okay. Anyway, so then the next thing we have is um, I have been invited into a beta program for a new app for podcasts called the Listen app. So basically, it's going to have a VIP membership. So it'll be kind of like having your own uh, our, our own private community, like it, it was a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group or something, but it'll be within the podcast app. So basically, here's the steps. It's not that difficult. You go download the Listen app, which is step one there. You see what that looks like in your app store. Step two is search for Trade Show Insights, which you can see what that looks like. Now on that page where it says two VIP members there towards the bottom, you'll actually see a red button that says subscribe. So you click to subscribe and then you use the VIP code Tuesday because Tuesday is our virtual lunch, right? So you enter where it says, Get the VIP membership and then enter invite code. You'll just enter the word Tuesday and then you will be subscribed as a VIP and we'll be able to communicate and you'll be able to uh, connect in the um, in the group with each other and with me. And so, like I said, it's in beta, so I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to work yet, but we need some people in the VIP group so we can try it out. Right. So anyway, so the, there's those instructions. Um, okay, so Ramah's asking if we can get the links in the comments so we can click and copy and paste them. Yeah, the that's what I was saying, Ramah. The problem is because he posts them in Facebook, and so they're not in the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube side. We don't have a way to post comments both places. So what I will do is this afternoon I will go in and I always go back and insert all the links on the YouTube replay as well. So they'll all be in the um, in the description. So if you want to just go back later today, you can get all of those. Or if you just hop over to the um, to the Facebook post later. But yeah, that's the one downside is there's not a way to post the comments in dual places, even though we're broadcasting both ways. So technology is always a challenge, right? <laughs> there's always some hurdle you have to leap over. Okay, so um, let's see what's next. Oh, Vegas is boring. <laughs> I just had to use that line. No, Vegas is the the boring, what is it? The boring company. Anyway, Tesla, the uh, Elon Musk company is boring a hole basically underneath the Vegas. They're building a big giant tunnel. Um, and so it's called the Vegas Loop. And so they are on track with their construction. They're actually, I think, a little bit ahead of schedule. It's going to be, and here's the link on that one. It's going to be a two mile tunnel at this point. I, get, I think they're already, some of the hotels are talking about adding on to it. Um, but anyway, they're going to have high speed autonomous vehicles to transport people, you know, underneath the strip. So anyway, so there's the article about that on TSNN. You can go check that out. I see Chuck is here from Elite Expo checking in from St. Louis. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I have to argue with you about the best barbecue. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm in Kansas City. We are the home of barbecue. <laughs> And I got a guest coming up that's going to back me up on that one, I'm sure, because she's from here, too. <laughs> but that's OK. All right. So let's see. Uh, so then the next one is the Joint Meetings Industry Council has put together a manifesto. And uh, let's see, Alan's going to put that up. This is a, a PDF. Um, they go through 15 ways that business events you know, create economic um, rebound, basically. And just some of the things are, you know, some of the ways that we provide uh, to the economy is with innovation, with relationships, with um, you know, just the, the visitor, the tourist economy, all of those kinds of things. So, you know, it, it's interesting to see the 15 points that they share for that. And then they also give some tips about how to actually advocate for the industry as well. So um, that's a, a very helpful tool to, to take a look at. Um, we're not going to go too deep into about restarting and stuff because we that was our focus last week. And I want to keep today a little bit more light, but um, in China, they are restarting uh, the Shenzhen World Exhibition Center, which, as I understand it, I don't know if they'd actually opened or if they had just barely opened or anyway, before things got shut down over there, but they are back up and running again. Uh, they held a sports and outdoor show and the article that I have uh to share with you here said they had 17,000 attendees. But if you go look at this and you see a picture of this place, it's ugh, mind blowing. It's enormous. Um, so anyway, and they've got other shows, several other shows scheduled for this month and coming up. So um, anyway, so they're, they're getting it together over there. Um, meanwhile, Freeman has done a video on the trade show of the future and so it's just kind of a um, a snapshot, I guess, of what trade show the new trade shows may look like with the the temperature check scanners and all those different kinds of things. So um, Alan's going to put up a link for that. So that is the um, the YouTube link. Um, and then also the SEMA show just announced that they are still a go for November. They are planning to hold their show in Las Vegas. They also have put together a video giving some kind of insights as to what their, their show is going to look like. So there's the link for that one. And then as we start to transition into our topic of the day about print, I wanted to share a, uh, an example. Actually, I've done a few posts on Trade Show Insights about the power of print marketing and direct mail, especially. Um, I did a podcast interview on direct mail, which if you go to Trade Show Insights, you can look that, you know, just search for that one. But I do have a link Alan's going to share. One of my favorite podcast interviews that I did, one of my favorite examples was, um, I call it how five print guys took over a trade show. And so it's these five, it was like a collection of five little robots that you put together yourself. And they all had augmented reality faces, which we'll talk a little bit more about augmented reality in a minute. But basically they had the little augmented reality faces. So you aim your camera at them and they come to life. It was just too cute. But anyway, so I love that example. But with that, we are going to move on and I'm going to bring up my guest here in just a minute, but talk a, a little bit first about print is so important, especially now, partly because it involves touch and we we're all literally out of touch these days. And so to be able to have something in print that people can touch, feel, handle, it makes a big difference. Also think of the fact of, you know, if you're like me, you're living all day on screen. You know, I, you know, you've got your email, you've got your social media, you've got your Zoom calls or your webinars or your virtual summits or all these different things you're doing. And so then you actually go open your mailbox and there's like, there's something in there besides a bill and it's so exciting, right? 
<laughs> so just having that ability to have things to touch. Um, it's a basic human need. I actually, um, and Marie may talk about this in a minute, but th I love, this is a booklet, and Alan, I'll have you put that um, link up for this as well. But this is, this is a book put out by, um, let's see, I believe, yeah, Sappy Paper, which I always, I like that name, Sappy, makes me think of savvy or, or sassy or something. But anyway, so... Um, it talks about the power of touch. And I love on the very first page, and I don't know how well you can see it. You probably can't see it at all. Can you see there's a little tiny line that runs around the side of the page there? But when you feel the page, you can actually feel that tiny little hairline. And it's absolutely amazing. you know. And they talk in here about the power of um, you know warm versus cool and textured versus smooth and all those kinds of things. But if you go to the um, to the Sappy website, this link here, you can actually request a copy of that book. So if you're a, a paper or tactile geek like me, you'll love that. So anyway, with that, I want to bring on today's guest, who is Marie Langdon, good friend of mine, and lives right here in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So I get to see her actually in real life from time to time as well. So that's kind of fun. But anyway, Marie is with Midland Paper and she is going to share a number of different examples and ideas with us today. So Marie. Thank you so you. much. It's a pleasure to be here. I have this unfortunate news to tell you that unfortunately that book is out of print. Oh. But the good news is if you go to that link, you actually can get everything that Marilis just mentioned and it is fabulous. And one thing that I really like about that book is it talks about touch is maybe this much of a sense versus vision and sight, um, I'm sorry, listening and um, tasting are only this much. So meaning of all the senses, touch is the greatest one that we can really impact. So along with what Marilis said is Direct mail is very powerful right now. It's not as crowded. People are just dying to reach out and literally touch someone or get something in the mail. So we kind of want to walk you through why we think direct mail matters and some kind of fun ideas of how to do that, starting with um, basis weight. So I think we have a, a slide for that. Yes. Let me start bringing up the slides here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we're looking at here is something that we lovingly call kind of the droop factor. <laughs> so you could, you could have, if, if you haven't printed before, there's this um, thing called basis weight. So it means how heavy a stock is. So when you look at the white sheets and you look at the printed sheets, you can see how one is stiffer and kind of sticks out. And through research, what we have found out is that people engage um, and they, uh, attribute a greater value, a greater brand strength to something mm -hmm. that is stiffer and feels really good in your hands. And another example of this, aside from direct mail, in, um, what, no matter what political party you belong to, starting with all the postcards that you get in the mail, just pull those out and feel them and don't even look at the print and think about what you're thinking of that brand based on how it feels, just that first initial feeling. And if you want to drop a fancy word, it's called brand embodiment. And what that means is, you know, kind of what I'm saying, like, if something is limp, or doesn't feel that sturdy, you kind of associate that brand with, you know, the stiffness and the quality of the stock. Well, and that is very true, because I've actually had people compliment me sometimes on like, you know, my business card, the way it feels mm -hmm. or something, you know, it's like, yeah, and well, I know, for one example, um, Alan and I also have a tea business and we actually wrote the tea explorations journal and we got a textured cover. It feels like almost kind of a uh, little bit leathery or something. And so people are always like, Ooh, this is really cool. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's that unexpected touch that people feel. And there's also soft touch coating, which jump this, we're not going to jump into envelopes yet, but just a teaser <laughs> that was very popular for credit card mailings to use soft touch mm. because that was kind of the in thing is uh, to have that wonderful feeling. And I'm gonna throw out one statistic here too. One of our mills, Tango, they did an insight study and they said, if something is sturdier, you get an 18% greater call to action. 
So again, oh. you know, come to my booth. If you put it on sturdier pay. Now I understand we're not quite ready to roll into trade shows right. yet, but I'm hopeful for everyone. Um, but, you know, come to my booth, put it on a sturdy stock. Call to action is 18% greater with a stiffer stock. Well, and the thing is, even though there's not physical trade shows right now, the, the virtual trade shows are happening mm -hmm. and it's still, it's an important add on for that element as well to do some kind of print. Um, so I know the next thing you're going to talk about is color. So I'm going to get yes. ready with my, with my show and tell here. <laughs> okay, perfect. So here's another statistic for you. Uh, again, a lot of these come from our mills and uh, through Marilis, if you need to know exactly who stated this, we can get you that information, but 20% greater response with the use of color. And Vanna, if you could hold that up for <laughs> us. Um, what we're looking at here is a peacock, same image, printed two hits of black, two hits of metallic, which I realize the metallic's a little hard to see on camera, but what's changed is the paper stock and that's it. And so just using paper as your fifth color, or even you could do black on a colored stock if you're in a, a budget crunch, just to create that impact. And um, brand, you could have brand recognition or just message recall is higher uh, with the use of color. And then I think we have a slide too with um, just yes. color. Okay, great. So this, this ties into, we have another area where we're also talking about envelopes, but let's just kind of address both those with this image. So what we're looking at here is, you know, the, the typical, I'm going to say typical credit card mailers, but wow, I yeah. mean, look at the, you know, top left of your screen and you've got, you can't necessarily see this, but you've got some spot UV on that pink one. It's, it was a very slick um, feeling piece. And then you have the uh, emboss plus the foil on the black envelope. Hmm. And then if you just go to the right there, that blue envelope, so use of color, they used a real stamp and then it was personalized to me. Um, the rock chalk mailer, they really use that entire envelope. And if, if we had an image of the back, the back was also flooded with ink. So granted, um, you need to work with your printer because we're converting, we're printing on large sheets and then we're converting into envelope, but it really has impact. I mean, you can't, even though I, I did help on the sidelines with this project. I couldn't wait to open the Rock Chalk Mailer. It was just so fun. It was like a, a present in the mail. And then it's a slightly covered up, but the Gala one, that was an off-white envelope. So using kind of a, a cream or a natural shade also sticks out in the mailbox. And then they also print it on the envelope. And then to the right, again, a little difficult because we're doing this virtually, but a lot of those envelopes have an interesting feel and texture. Mm -hmm. They also have different shapes. Like the yellow one is actually a square. Granted, it does cost you an extra, you know, 20 cents to mail a square, but the combination of the color and the size really jumps out. Or like I say, those middle ones both had texture. You could go with a, a linen or a tech weave or a um, laid. There's so many different finishes. And then the blues, one of our mills, um, go ahead, you're gonna say something. I was just gonna say those blues, I could tell that those are just, even without touching them or seeing them in person, I could tell those are just really cool because it, some of them are shimmery and they kind of have a, 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 just a character or personality. Yes, a hundred percent. And what's been really fun with that campaign is a couple of the companies that I work with have said, wow, that's really close to the Children's Mercy Blue or Rockers mm. and KU have both said, that's pretty close to our brand color. I wonder if we could, you, you know, if we could find the budget money, convince someone in admissions or whoever their partners are to just, you know, a little bit more money, but um, definitely an impact in the mailbox. And the other thing um, that we can't really see in that image that you can also set yourself apart is the flap style. It, you could have a square flap. You can have a Euro flap, which is kind of a V. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's always trade-offs, and I try to point those out, is some of those are not machine insertable. So oh. work with your printer and your supplier to say, okay, are there any other impacts? It wouldn't change the cost for the post office side of it, but it could you know, take a little more time or a little mm -hmm. bit more money uh, to 
stuff your envelope if you can't machine insert but well and it always goes back to kind of pick your battles too you know it's like yeah. okay how badly do you need a special shaped envelope versus you know could you get get a you know get a great color but a basic style and you'd still be good so you know ask sure. those right questions up front and make a big difference oh yeah yeah and i will put in a plug for nina it used to be that when we had an envelope on a project we would just roll our eyes because the national envelope would say five thousand must take all of unders and unders you know it was all about them not what i yeah. needed and with nina we can convert with you know the mills help down to a box at 250. so you uh -huh. can do really small amounts and um even if it didn't come directly to midland people can buy directly from ninapaper.com yeah and i have to say nina has been one of my all-time favorite paper companies i've had a lot of paper from Nina. My letterhead was Nina paper for many years. And so, yeah, they do good stuff. So yes. are we ready to start talking interactive? I think so. Okay. Do you want, do, do you want to be but, first? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were laughing about this. This is actually, this is um, the maker quarterly. This is from Mohawk paper. And Marie had mentioned this when we were doing our pre conference last week. And I said, Oh, I have that one. I never have got around to opening it. So I said, I'll do it live on camera <laughs> that we were joking this morning. Maybe it won't be that exciting, but it's a zip strip. So. Okay. Whoops. So. The I got bonus, it off camera, so. <laughs> the bonus here is you're engaging two senses. You hear that something is happening mm -hmm. and then you're physically doing it. And now you're kind of like, well, wow, what else is in it? Let me get inside. Ooh, metallic, <laughs> ooh. So of course so then, it's a, a mill piece. They had yeah. a little bit of money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then it opens up. I'll try to hold it way back so you can see. So, so um, it's got a pocket folder over here with a bunch of goodies. And then there's like a booklet on this side. Yeah. So <laughs> the zip strip would require a die and working closely with your printer, but definitely doable and very fun to interact with that and jump mm -hmm. into the piece. I, I do. Unlike Marilis, when I handed <laughs> out that piece, I pretty much was opening everyone's and I had to like sit on my hands to let the clients do it themselves. Cause I just, I just thought it was so fun. And, well, yeah. part of it was, I, I should say it came shrink wrapped. So I still had it shrink wrapped. I had oh. never gotten it. So, so I hadn't even discovered the fact that it was a zip strip until you told me about it. So, yeah. but you know, it's one of those things where it's like stuff gets, you know, overwhelming at some point and you don't get to all of it so but anyway yeah i think if somebody got this and saw you know you wouldn't be able to resist like you said if you actually got that in the mail and pulled that zip strip to open and and reveal i think that's the whole idea is the big reveal you know making mm -hmm. it something that is you know that that little added um for or aha moment for people for sure and i think we have a few more examples on that slide of interactive yes Okay, so what we're looking at here is you pull out and that car, move, if you look at the top one, you pull that green and you can see that little indentation and the car moves across. And it also was um, sent direct mail in a, cl uh, a translucent envelope. So not completely mm. clear, the completely clear are very popular now too. And the translucent add a little bit of mystery, but you can kind of see what's inside. And then the one below actually had three panels that pull out and night at the races and the horses kind of jump across as you pull through. So I think that one's clever. Me too. That's definitely a little bit more expensive. Well, and Rama makes a really good point that you can consider any money that's not being spent on events right now and put some of that towards a unique mailing piece instead. You know, the visual and tactile impact that you make can be well worth the extra money. I think that is an excellent mm. point because especially with the virtual events right now, you know, when you don't have that face to face, doing some kind of a wow moment with mm -hmm. your mailing piece, you know, can really help you to stand out, whether that is a pre-show mailer or that's a follow-up piece that you do after the the virtual event. I think either way, it's going to make a, a big impact on those attendees. Okay. And to touch on that, I listened in on an AIJ conference call at the beginning of the pandemic, and they said, hey, send out a kit for your virtual event. Yes. So, I mean, this is just top of mind, but a crown or okay, maybe it's not paper, but a sash, but you know, some type of box. I mean, again, depending on what your budget is, it can yeah. be as 
it's, and we're gonna show this in a second. This is a little um, 3D Jayhawk, but you know, something that, say if you're doing a screenshot of everyone who attended, everyone holds up a certain item and mm -hmm. then um, you just have a fun photo because everybody has the same image or a sign or a banner, I don't know, anything, glasses, just all kinds of things. And yeah. we have another slide, right? With all our 3D examples. Oh. Yep. Oops. Let me go to that one. There okay, we go. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is another one of my favorites. This um, is starting on the left. If we look at this, it's die cut and you can see where the three pieces in the center show you what that hot air balloon looks like. So that ships flat. It happened to ship in a colored envelope. So that garner, it was a, a fake promotion from a paper mill, but I thought very effective just to show oh, how yeah. something flat can turn into 3D. So it didn't cost any more to mail because it's flat, but yet it turned into something interesting. And that's something that, again, if we go back to this idea, someone keeping things that you send mm -hmm. them, I would certainly keep that on my desk or like the Jayhawk, even though I didn't go to KU, I think it's a very clever campaign and you put it together. And in this case, with the Jayhawk going to the far right where you put it together, they also were saying, hey, tag us on social media. It was kind of like a flat Stanley idea let us know where your Jayhawk has been and encouraging oh. just interaction with the audience. That's cute. That's clever. And Rama and then, has another comment for us oh, here. Yes. She says oh. that they've been doing trade show in a box kits for clients to encourage attendance at virtual events and or thank attendees who attended. And oh. a print piece is always part of that box. So yeah, I mean- You it's are my just, new best friend. I love that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, just, it really does. It really does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you think we're all about high tech these days, but it still is about those little moments. I know, I remember a promotion somebody sent one time that was like put together a paper airplane and then you were supposed to fly the airplane video yourself you know do a selfie video and then you know hashtag it on so, uh, social media and then they were doing a contest I mean it just it's not rocket science it's mm -hmm. like let's just do something fun and creative with it so yeah talking about creative you want to move to augmented reality next yeah for sure okay for sure okay so I'm just going to assume that everyone has a just a baseline knowledge of augmented reality, just, you know, where that's, you're basically taking, in this case, a printed piece and using an app that links that page to video content. So in this case, this was one of our paper mills, Domtar, and this is their um, Paper Matters. It used to be called Blue Line, and now it's called Paper Matters Magazine. And they were showing a printed piece that was done on their paper. You would use their app hover your phone over this section and then video would load where they would actually show the piece kind of like what we're doing today and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be used for a number of ways. I've heard people say, Hey, if it was an alumni magazine and you were highlighting someone who played the violin, augmented reality could uh, link you to listening to that person playing oh, their instrument. That's cool. And then this is not print related, so it's kind of sad, but somebody said, or, you know, like in a car, you can use augmented realities to hover over your um, control panel where it says uh, engine issue, and then you would use your phone and it would uh, load what could all the possible problems be. In that case, there would be no mm -hmm. manual, which would be sad for print, but um, in those moments, you kind of want to get to the bottom line quickly and augmented reality could be a way to do that. Well, I don't know if they even include physical manuals in a car anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it's I haven't bought a new years. car, but I'm guessing mm -hmm. it, they probably don't. <laughs> it's, so. it's usually not all the way handy for me yeah. when I need it. And yeah. then I think we have a slide with yes. these pictures on it. Okay, so this is another example and we'll talk about personalization in a minute, but this was done a couple years back for Emporia State, a college not too far outside of Kansas City. And what I thought was great about this is they combined personalization with augmented reality. So these are three different actual students and their different area of interest. So whether it's uh, education or someone's an athlete or um, 
you know, nursing. I don't think they have nursing, but if they, they have actually nursing. do, they okay, actually great. do. We have Alan's niece is a nursing student at Emporia State right now. So, okay, excellent. And so, kudos to these guys because very personalized based on if I'm applying to their school, they know I'm interested in becoming an educator. I get the piece that has the education student on it. I flip to the back, um, I get the instructions for how to use augmented reality, I hover it hover my phone on the front and video loads. And I'm hearing a student talk about their personal experience um, in my major. So I just thought this was extremely well done. That is, and you know, anything that you can do to personalize too, and, and print has become so personalized. I mean, you can, well, I know you've got another example here yes. we can show where it literally mm -hmm. is personalized to the person. Okay, so this um, example, to your point, they personalized with the name on the front and then they had a man versus a woman. So depend, you know, if it's coming to me, I would get the little woman in a dress that popped up. And in this case, it was addressed to a man to Scott. And so he got the pop up of a gentleman and this was printed on a digital press. I believe it was Indigo at the time, a really fun die cut, which uh, side note, the printer has used this die cut with other clients to, um, mm. They used it for a Nelson piece. So in this case, this project morphed into a lot of other things. From a personalization standpoint, success of the campaign to get members, it blew the doors off any past campaigns. And well, I, I want to make sure people are... I want to make sure people notice that they're on the the big picture. The KCDMA banner says "Welcome Scott Brockmeyer." So Thank it's you. you know, so it, it's carrying that personalization into the project. And I I've seen some done where they you know they have the personalization throughout. Yes. So it's it's very very cool. There's um, so much you can. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Rama has a question back on the AR. Um, is the special app no longer required for AR to work? Is it just a camera function now? I think that it depends a lot on the how it was coded in the first place. Is that correct? Because I think there are generic AR readers out there now. Do you know or? I don't personally, I don't know the answer to this question. Okay. I know with, um, let me say this, with with the Domtar piece, you have to be using the Domtar app to mm, open it. Okay. I do recall when we were doing, when this first came out a long time ago, um, there was someone, oh, I can't, I'm not coming up with it, but it was a company out of California and they got bought by someone else. And I think Layer has been bought. And I think the mm. progression was that you would eventually not have to use an app and it'd be with your camera. But I don't know if we're there yet. Yeah, and I I'm not sure either. I know I know that I have several AR readers on my phone that I can use, but as far as you know the proprietariness or whatever. So, but that is a good question, Rama. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you're making me want to go investigate. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I know we're running a little long today, so I want to just quickly tell. We've talked a lot on texture, but I do want to show this one example, mm -hmm. especially yeah. because it is a pre-show mailer inviting somebody to the booth. <laughs> Okay, so this piece, I'm actually holding it in my hand right now. The green part is ribbed. So that's a um, special paper called Classic Columns. So it feels like a sleeve on a coffee cup. So it's amazing and it's die cut out. So it's separate. That green is overlaid on top mm -hmm. of the cup and then slit behind it and then folded in half. So you can feel that texture there and literally feels like you're holding a cup of coffee. And then it says inside, which you probably saw previously, come join us, have a cup of coffee with Cerner. We want to talk about what's happening with you. So well, very and, clever. And and on the just the um, trade show side of this whole promotion. I love that if you look, it says join fellow Cerner clients for coffee and conversation. So just, you know, file that idea away, guys, that this is something you could do. Have your clients in the booth instead of just having all your own company experts mm -hmm. and then invite attendees to come and hear, you know, those personal stories from your clients straight from the client's mouth. So um, I thought that was a great idea. So I love that mailer on so many different levels. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. And I don't think it was cost prohibitive. This no. did ship in a clear envelope. And then you had the back, which uh, you just throw the address on. But clear is pretty popular. Yeah. So, all right. And then I know we've got some extra. Yes. 
bonus ideas. Okay, here. this is uh, if we're taking that budget that maybe you normally would spend for in-person event to kind of take it to the next level. So this is out of a book that sadly is also out of print, but we can still utilize the ideas. We've got tattoos, so that can be done, a temporary tattoo. Then in the center, it might be a tiny bit hard to see, but look for that center black key next to the big gold key. And then beneath it, can you see how it's creating kind of a red reveal? That's thermochromatic ink. So when you rub on it, it changes colors. So that could be really cool to create a reveal and get people to really get involved with your piece. And same you could have, go ahead. I was just gonna say the same concept as like those mood cards where you like hold them and the, the heat of your thumb changes colors. Yes, 100%. I would say if you are in Arizona or somewhere with really <laughs> extreme heat, you gotta be careful because this piece sat in my car in Kansas and oh. I'd be so excited and I would get to that page and I'd be at a client's and I'm like, oh wait, it's already red because <laughs> the pieces are like 120 degrees. They were a little overheated. Um, in the last Maybe a better one, campaign for the winter months. Definitely, <laughs> yes, yes. The last example shows you, oh, shows you, but you can't smell it, but the top of the can, if you rub on it, it's scented ink. So it smelled like coffee. So you could, um, again, create a campaign around a scent, uh, you know, spring flowers or McCormick um, spices used to do their annual report and they always added a different scent of the spice into the oh, annual report. Clever. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things that we can do. And depending on how much money you have or what impact you want to do, work with your printer so you can get the timelines so that we can get what you need when you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and as you've shown us today, there is no limit to the possibilities. It's like, you know, dream up the idea and then see how you can possibly make it happen. So yes. I want to make sure I know we're running long and, and we've got people that need to leave. So I want to make sure oh. that you tell them about what you've got available here. Okay, great. Thanks. So this is a book that was done by, we talk a lot about SAPI. They do a lot of support materials for our industry. And this is a direct mail handbook that they did a number of years back. So um, the postal information, you're going to want to go online for the most current postal information, but the front part of it and many of the examples in it are very inspiring and they're just good basic direct mail information that is current today. So if you send me a note with your address on LinkedIn, um, or if you don't want to put your address on my LinkedIn profile, we can exchange emails. If you let me know by this Friday, I'd be happy to send you a copy. I can't send international. I apologize. I, I would no. hand deliver it to Italy if I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I come up with a flight, but you can just scan this and it'll take you right to my LinkedIn profile and you can message me if you would like to be included. And I've got, um, I think 15 ish copies. So the first 15 people, you're welcome to a copy of the book. All right. Awesome. Well, and Alan, um, I know one question people maybe, and especially Rama, you were asking about the AR codes. As far as QR codes, um, I actually created that little LinkedIn QR code for Marie. There's a, an online, a free tool online. So Alan's going to put that link up. I will share that here in just a second. But, um, you know, it's a great way if you want to make it easy. You know, a friend of mine recently shared this idea with me and I'm like, oh, that's genius. I'm going to start adding a QR slide or a QR code to all my slides and all my workshops now, but it's just a site called QR Code Monkey. And you can go in and you can stylize it. And, you know, I, you saw I put the little LinkedIn logo there in the center. So, you know, whatever it is you want to create a QR code for it, that's a really great little freebie tool to use. I know Marie's got a couple other links real quick. Alan, if you can pop up the Fold Factory one. Um, and actually, if you just want to just throw up all those, I know we're running late, so I want to just put those up real quick. But and again, for our YouTube watchers, we will have those all in the description on YouTube later today. Um, but anyway, so there's Fold Factory, which is envelopes and all different kinds of clever folding. I have not explored that site as much as I have the next one which is Paper Specs, which is one of my favorites. And I look forward to their videos every week. So, um, you know, all kinds of clever things. They they recently showed one that was a restaurant menu that was like, a, looked like a um, stage. And so the center was open and everything slid out from the sides. And then as you pulled out this side, it slid something into the stage and the menu was out here. It was just really super clever. And then the last one is a recorded webinar 
And I'll let you talk about what that mm -hmm. webinar is, Marie. Okay, so it's Cohere One and Jay Schmid kind of talking about now what, and this was about midstream in the pandemic. And my favorite part is really, um, to be honest, Jay Schmid, Cohere One is a part of Midland, but Jay Schmid really talking about humanity marketing. And this mm. is almost 100% of that neuroscience book and just ties in beautifully and just saying human touch and connecting and people and um, paper and mailing. And uh, when you go to Cohere One and events, drop down and it'll say, now what? And the um, you need a password and the password is leadership. Oh, so, okay. And Good. that's gonna be up and they promised me they would keep it up until September 1. Okay. Great. Well, I hope everybody has had as much fun today mm -hmm. as we've had sharing, doing this show and tell with you of all the cool and clever ways to use your print marketing um, projects. And hopefully you've gotten lots of inspiration. Marie, thank you so much thank for you. taking time out to join us in the cafe today. And I want to thank everybody for, um, for being a part of the cafe over the last three, four months. Um, like I said, we will be back on August 11th, and we will be starting up again with our weekly lunches, same time, same place, either YouTube or Facebook. But I want to wish everybody a great summer in the meantime. Get out there and enjoy yourself, and I will see you on August 11th. And feel free to reach out to me in the meantime if there's anything I can do. Thanks. Bye.